When I think about the topic of uh, challenging challenges, I have to say that the biggest inspiration that comes to my mind in my life is my daughter, Aisha. Aisha, as you heard, uh, passed away this, this year, 24th of January, when she was just 18 years old. Because of uh, pulmonary fibrosis, which is a terminal disease, a progressive hardening of the lung. Now, Aisha knew that she had very limited time in this world. And despite that, it was the way in which she led her life and lit up the skies that I find truly, truly inspirational. In fact, if I can have the presentation there, please, yeah. If I share with you, this is a self-portrait that Aisha made a couple of years back. You probably can't see it very well. Um, the next one. Yeah. So that's a self-portrait that she made a couple of years ago. And there are some words on that painting that perhaps describe Aisha's attitude better than anything else that I can say. And the words read, We are here to laugh at the odds and live life so well that death will tremble to take us. And tremble indeed death did when it came to take Aisha. Because Aisha, I think, achieved more in her 18 years than many of us achieve in a lifetime. She's an inspirational speaker. She gave TED Talks, Inc. Talks. Her talks on YouTube have over a million hits. And she's now also a very celebrated I would like to believe a best-selling author of her book called My Little Epiphanies. My Little Epiphanies is a collection of Aisha's reflections on life. Aisha writes in a book, one of her epiphanies is, the fact that I'm sitting here writing these words is a miracle. I would not have been here on this earth for more than a year had destiny not changed its mind. And you see Aisha here next to the sign that says Great Ormond Street Hospital. Now Aisha was born without an immune system and a life expectancy of less than one year. And we knew that the only way to save her was to have a bone marrow transplant that was possible only at the Great Ormond Street Hospital in London the cost of which was over 150,000 pounds at a time when our family savings were no more than 2,000 pounds. So I really do think it is a miracle that we were able to take Aisha as a baby to London. It was a miracle we took her to the Great Ormond Street Hospital. It was a miracle that we were able to raise in a very short period of time through a radio appeal on Sunrise Radio a staggering amount of money. It was a miracle that Aisha's story touched the hearts of a nation where she did not even live. And it was indeed a miracle that the doctors, despite the fact that we couldn't find a donor or a match for Aisha, they used my marrow, which was like a mismatched transplant. One of the first times it was ever done in Europe. It was a miracle that it was done. It was a miracle that it worked. And it was a miracle that saved her life. And indeed, a miracle that we had 18 fantastic years with my daughter, Aisha. Aisha writes in her book, Pick the highest mountain to climb on and the dullest of the days to shine on. And I have to say, these words of courage probably inspire me the most of everything that I've seen, read, observed in my life. These words of courage. Pick the highest mountain to climb on and the dullest of the days to shine on. And I think what I probably learned more from my daughter than anything else was that all of us have to just start from where we are. We cannot help the hand that life has dealt us. So you start from where you are, but then you can certainly jump as high as you can and be the very best that you can be by focusing on what you can do and not on what you cannot do. And Aisha lived that philosophy till the very end, making every day count and every single moment magical. And let me share some of the stories of how Aisha truly lived 
by this unique spirit of incredible courage. So about five years ago when we were given the diagnosis that although Aisha had survived the bone marrow transplant, now she had pulmonary fibrosis, which is like a death sentence because it has no cure. We knew that she had only five years to live. We were totally heartbroken. At that time, Inc. Talks, like Ted, called, us, called me up and said, would you like to come and speak on inspiration, inspiring leaders? And I said, you know, the only <laughs> most inspirational person that I know in my life is my daughter. And I'll find it incredibly hard to speak about her. I, I, I don't think I can emotionally do it. And then Lakshmi, the lady at Inc., asked me, well, why don't you ask Aisha to speak? Aisha was 15 years at that time. So I remember vividly, I called up Aisha and I said, Aisha, would you like to speak at Inc.? She said, well, is that like Ted? I said, yes. She said, tell me more. I said, well, there'll be about two, 200 people, maybe 300 people, and would you like to speak to them about how you cope with your unique situation and your challenges? And she said, Dad, you know that I can barely speak to three people. I'm so shy. I don't think I can, and therefore, I must. <clears throat> and with that, she said, and then it was a unique sort of Aisha spirit, whatever she did, she had to be the very best that she could possibly be. So she went at it, she wrote down her script, she practiced and rehearsed for hours and hours and hours and then practiced some more, till she was ready. And in one of the run-up speeches to the event that she gave at a gathering like this for about two, three hundred people, for the first time, this is a 15-year-old kid going up to stage, and she spoke, and she got a standing ovation at the end. The first time that she had experienced a standing ovation, she didn't know what it was. She thought everyone had gotten bored and they wanted to leave. <laughs> so she looked rather confused, and I said, no, Aisha, this is for you, and this is for how incredible you are, and she perhaps never fully understood the kind of impact that she had on the people that she spoke to. So I want to share with you the first clip of her speech at Inc. that she gave when she was 15 years old. So have a look. So as we now know, there's always something in life to sing about, something to be grateful for. I'm grateful for my loving family, my friends, my dogs, in fact, I'm even grateful for the challenges that life has thrown at me, for which I've experienced life with a much greater intensity than I would have otherwise. And I do believe that my soul would have no rainbow if my eyes had no tears. Thank you for listening. So that was Aisha, and, and she did get a standing ovation. Um, at Inc. This time, of course, she was prepared for it. So she stood and she acknowledged and she was happy to get that validation. Start from where you are, jump as high as you can, focus on what you can do, not what you cannot. As the disease progressed, Aisha could no longer stand or, or even walk. So she was on oxygen almost 24 hours carrying this little oxygen tank and trying to walk, finding it very difficult to go to school. So she had to drop out of regular school. But she was still determined to do something, something magical, make every single day count. And she decided to focus on art. And she would go to school with her mother with a lot of difficulty, go there, reach there and do her art. And she discovered this unique love for painting because she found in painting, uh, an incredible way for her to express herself in almost a way that had no limitations and no boundaries. So I want to share with you a collection of the work, uh, some of the paintings that Aisha did over the last few years. Please have a look. I'm 
Isn't that something? So she started painting, uh, I don't know if you noticed, the last frame was a stunning picture of uh, my wife, who's, who's right here. And uh, I thought the, the picture was incredible, so I went to Aisha and said, Aisha, how come you're always so biased towards your mother? You want to paint only your mom, what about painting your father? So she looked at me and said, Dad, I only paint beautiful people. <laughs> so she always loved getting back at me. So she loved painting, and you saw, um, uh, I think, an incredible collection of her art. And uh, as you may have seen, her most favorite subject was dogs. She just absolutely adored dogs. Start from where you are, jump as high as you can, make every single day count and every moment magical. The disease progressed. It's a very, very cruel disease. And by now, Aisha was unable to even walk. She was now on a wheelchair full-time oxygen, and determined to live life to the fullest. At this moment, about a year and a half back, Inc. called again, and Lakshmi said, Aisha, you're such a star, you know, you're the daughter of Inc., and we'd love for you to come back and speak. Would you like to do that? And Aisha was discussing it with me, and she said, you know, Dad, I did the first speech, and I was much better then. I could stand up, I could walk around, I could speak without oxygen and now I'm on a wheelchair, I have oxygen all the time, I would like to speak, but I would like to do it without oxygen. So I was startled and I said, Aisha, why would you want to do that? You, can, you need that oxygen to breathe, you know? She said, no, well, I don't want to go up on stage in a wheelchair and sit down with this oxygen mask because I don't want people to pity me or to sympathize with me. I want them to respect me for what I have to say, and for who I am. So, um, <clears throat> so there she was, she said, you know, I will do it, but I will do it at my own terms, which is I will do it without inhaling oxygen. So just think about that for a moment. It's like if I asked you to stop breathing right now. Stop breathing and speak. It's, I mean, how do you do that? But this girl was something else. Focus on what you can do, not on what you cannot. She said, I'm determined and I'm going to do it. I said, how? She said, well, she had this unique regimen in her mind, that of an Olympic athlete. And she said, I'm going to go on the treadmill, I'm going to walk, I'm going to do the stationary bike, I'm going to ride it, I'm going to do these light weights, I'm going to speak for 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, 30, a minute, two minutes, till I can speak without oxygen. I said, that is really, really incredible. And there she was, she started every day, she was determined, and she started speaking, practicing to rehearse, building her oxygen tolerance, and learning how to speak without that for up to 10 minutes. So think about that, it's as if I asked you to stop breathing for 10 minutes, and to speak for 10 minutes. It is incredulous. So let me share with you the next talk that she gave at Inc. And this time you'll see that she's sitting down because she could no longer stand. But notice that she is trying to speak without any oxygen. And it was incredibly hard for someone who was oxygen dependent 24-7. So have a look at this video. So happiness is an attitude. Happiness is doing what you truly love. And I feel that happiness can only come from acceptance. I accept who I am. And I accept where I'm at. And I accept the challenges that I'm battling with today. And I'm even more determined to make the most of this wonderful gift of life that God has given me. As Anderson once said, enjoy life. There's plenty of time to be dead. So this time again, she got a standing ovation. This time she was expecting it. <laughs> so she waited long enough to make sure that everybody was giving her the standing ovation that she so deserved. Start from where you are, jump as high as you can. 
The disease continued to progress, and now she was no longer able to even sit on the wheelchair. She was now bedridden. And this is about the middle of last year. And she was, you know, a, a typical teenager, getting bored out of her skull because her mind was so incredibly active. So she asked my wife, said, you know, how long can I watch television? It's all mindless. What am I supposed to do? I'm just lying in bed. I can't do anything. So my wife gave her this book called Notes to Myself by Hugh Panther. How many of you have read that book? So a few have read it. So it's a uh, bestseller, sold over a million copies. It's a collection of musings of Hugh Panther, a pretty, a very sort of a profound book. We gave that to her and Aisha, in typical Aisha style, read it, was rather dismissive, and said, I can do much better than this. <laughs> so she started writing down all her thoughts, reflections on what she called a lifetime of emotions just lying in bed, from living to dying, from love to anger, from hatred to forgiveness, a full spectrum of emotions that she was experiencing, just lying in bed with a level of honesty that I have to say I find absolutely staggering. She also developed this unique art form called doodle art, which is a combination of art and an epiphanies, which is also there in her book. So her book, My Little Epiphanies, for me, I think, truly reflects who Aisha was. In fact, the day that she, the book got printed, it came to our house a day before she passed away. And the book came home, and Aisha was struggling to breathe, and she was gasping, and she was very, very weak, unable to open her eyes. I took the book to her, and I said, Aisha, your book has finally arrived. You know, have a look, and she could not open her eyes. So I took her hand, and I put her fingers on the title of the book, my Little Epiphanies. And she nodded and she knew that the book had been printed. In some ways, I think that was the purpose that she felt she had in this life. Also, another spectacular coincidence was that the next day was the launch of a book at the Jaipur Literature Festival, which turned out to be her exactly at the same time as she was being buried in the cemetery. So for me, therefore, for all of these reasons, I believe that Aisha truly lives on through her book, and I think she will continue to inspire and touch many, many lives over the next many, many years. So I want to share with you um, an interview. You can see now that she is um, even more frail. She's bedridden, she's on oxygen, but she is determined to give off her very, very best. This interview was taken a few days before Aisha passed away, in which she talks about her book. And what is the message you want to tell the world? I think, basically, everyone's just fighting their own battles together, and we're all on a roller coaster ride. And mine's been going particularly down this year and I felt so like stuck and so um, writing this book has really uplifted me and so I wanted like my readers to find peace on whatever roller coaster ride they may be on so I hope that's what will happen. Thank you Aisha. Thank you. So pick the highest mountain to climb on and the dullest of the days to shine on. Start from where you are and jump as high as you can. Focus on what you can do, not on what you cannot. Make every single day count and every moment magical. So as I struggle as a father and how to go forward, <laughs> so thank you for that. <laughs> If you don't mind, I'll take a couple more minutes. So as I struggle with you know, how to take it forward, uh, I, I get direction from an epiphany in Aisha's book. And she says, if you can't change your own life, there's always someone else's. And it's interesting that uh, you see that Aisha's painting on the left and her book on the right, Aisha would never sign her name on her painting or even her book. 
And when I asked her why not, she said, you know, I don't see the point of artists writing their names because it's not about them, it's about the other people. It's about the other people, what they can see in the work that you have done and how that speaks to you. It's the others who are important, it's not so much about you. And therefore, I truly believe the best way to honor the legacy of my daughter would be to help find ways to make a difference in the lives of others. And I believe that in some ways, I, you know, rather than donating money to charities, I think if one can find ways to personalize it, I find it a lot more rewarding and fulfilling. So here are two people who are very close to our hearts. So we have Dave, who's got cerebral palsy, and we're trying to make a difference in his life. And there is Neha on the other side on the right, who also has a lung issue like Aisha, but her father has very limited means. I've been trying to do what we can to make a difference in their lives. And I truly believe that the best way to honor Aisha's legacy is to find ways to make a difference in the lives of those who are less privileged. So in the end, in the end, I want all of us here to just take a deep breath. Take a deep breath and let's just be grateful for the fact that we are alive. Let's just be grateful for the fact that we can breathe. Let's just be grateful for the people that we have whom we love so dearly in our lives. And let's decide right here, right now to hold them even closer and love them even more than we've ever done before. And as Aisha writes in a book, let's aim for the moon, walk in the darkness together, and catch the glittering stars along the way. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Aisha would have been rather proud of me as seeing that. But she would have told me that, listen, don't get carried away. They stood up because it's, you're telling a story about me. <laughs> so uh, what I thought, I thought as a, when I was thinking about this event and uh, so many people, so many young minds, that I thought uh, I would like to top, you know, uh, finish it off with a song I wrote on my daughter uh, just a couple of days back. Um, and I've captured her epiphanies that you're now familiar with in that song, so I hope you enjoy it. Can you all hear me? This is the story of my little girl She'll always be my little girl This is the story of my little girl She'll always be my little girl She was born, we were told she wouldn't survive She had the transplant and we thought she'd never die This is the story of my little girl She'll always be Pick the highest mountain to climb on And the dullest day to shine on When she couldn't run, she started to walk When she couldn't walk, she started to paint When she couldn't paint, she started to write About her pain, her pain This is the story Same
for the moon Walk in the darkness together Catch the glittering stars along the way with me. One, two, three, four. This is the story of my little girl. She'll always be my little girl. Sing with me. This is the story of my little girl. She'll always be Thank you.